Dr. Thomas Manton IV, I'm continuing about the high calling. Get ready to be blessed. The Lord has reminded me about the high price it takes to pay to walk in the high level of glory. And if you look around, you see most don't have it. So when you do, you have to rejoice in that fact that God's hand is upon you. It seems like you walk through so many things. Joseph, when he became the prime minister, number two in command, even to have the life, lives of his brothers who sold him out in his own hand to do what he wished with them or not. Uh, cost him a lot. He went through every kind of thing. So God is uh, reminding us of the benefits, the amazing benefits. I want to also add the word amazing. The, the amazing benefits of walking in the high calling. Number one, he blesses you first and then the world. You have to drink before you pour, you know, you have to uh, receive before you can give. And when, you, when you've received a lot, you have a lot to give. But along the way, so many things transpire. So many disappointments through the negligence of mere men. Either they drop it, they delay, they deny, they think about their own stuff, they don't follow through. It's so many things that happen. And we've seen it all, you know. So what's the consolation in that? That God's hand is upon you and you're going to, you're literally used as a tool to shake the nations of the world. I just had a meeting uh, a while ago with a great apostle came to see me and uh, boy I couldn't let him go before I prayed you know it's amazing the anointing you know you think well we've had our meeting we discussed everything we planned a lot of things we brought all the points up we got through it all and now uh, let's pray you know and you want to pray a quick little prayer and so you think and then the Lord reminds me no the glory the glory's here the glory's in you my son my son Thomas, the glory is in you. Release it. The key to uh, walking in more is to give away. And sometimes you get disillusioned with people that you don't want to do it. Now, not this guy. He's a great apostle. I, I'd go to any length to bless him because of the kind of person that he is. So valuable, so, so wonderful, so mature. It seems I'm, I'm dealing with older men these days senior men in the kingdom, not just based on their age, but in their experience. Because the juniors and the novices have so much foolishness going on. It's hard to, uh, to rely on them, you know, because every step they take is a struggle. But a mature man is not like that. He's, he's set, he's already blessed, he's already... And this is not about monetary uh, comparisons and all that, but the stability factor, the wisdom factor, the, the factor of the glory that's in someone. When they see something good, they value it. They know it. But I have to say something here to clear, to clear the air very, very like a flamethrower that would burn out all the combustible, flammable anything and remove the atmosphere of it. We must understand this. I have to say this that it has absolutely nothing to do with what another man has when God has it all in his hand to bless you. You'll get to the point when you walk with God, you, you, you're so blessed, you're, you've gone further than any other situation or person. And that, that's what happens, that's an inevitable reality. Ask Abraham if he had a need. Ask Moses if he needed a, uh, someone to buy him lunch. Or, give him an offering. Offerings are good, the seed that goes into the kingdom that advances things and helps things. And Wow, 
uh, people that do things like that, they get blessed by God. It's so honorable. It's such a, uh, an awesome thing to sow seed that you're going to receive harvest back from the Lord. Always continue to do that. Always be a Luke 638 person. Give it. Shall be given you good measure. Press down, shake it together, running over. Shall men give you your bosom the same measure you measure, the same measure we measure back to you again. Genesis 8.22, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest will never cease. What a man sows, that shall he also reap. Ephesians 6.8. Uh, is that Romans 6.6 6 or 1 Corinthians 6.6? 6, 6? What a man sows, that shall he also reap. Sowing and reaping, it. it works both ways. Um, Mark 10, 28 to 30, Jesus said to Peter, when Peter was asking him about it, what about all we've given up to walk with you? He says, hey, I got to tell you, son, whatever you've given for the kingdom, for me and the Father and the gospel, will be given back to you a hundred times with eternal life. Talked about some persecution there. Well, you get so blessed. There's some people that hate you for it, but so what? That's their problem, isn't it? Uh, the high calling will bring you into stuff that some men will revile you because they hate your success. Envy and jealousy, a definition for that that's good is this. I hurt at your success. Your success causes me pain. And what, well, when you're really walking with God and you got a lot on you from heaven, you'll, that emotion will get lulled to sleep, even to be annihilated and put out of you. You don't feel like you want to walk in anybody else's shoes. You like the ones you're walking in. I'm talking about the, the road of the high calling, the amazing benefits of walking, the calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul said, I don't count myself to have apprehended because there's more to do. I press on to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There's more to do. There's more to attain. But when God's hand is upon you in such glory, you, you, you marvel. He keeps reminding you of how powerful he's made you. Him, of course, his power flowing through you. You understand? It's a phenomenon. It's a... And then you see people that come in some way and then they mess the program up somehow. They drop the ball, they don't follow through, they don't reciprocate, they don't... So many ways to describe it, so many scenarios. But then we, we, we have a recollection of that. But the main thing is that when you're walking in the Holy Ghost, you let the Lord burn any feeling of regret, anxiety, stress, disappointment, pain, hurt, you know, all that has to be out of you. Yeah, things can come to sting. They sting, you know, like a something that gets you, stings for a moment. But you can just whew, rinse it right out. Flush it right down. Wash it right off of you, out of you and off of you. God is good at doing that. Next point, the Lord wants us to have a productive day every day. Especially when the hand of God is upon us. There's so much to get done. We gotta get on with the program. And every hour of every day, you could be doing something productive. But this realm of glory that I was speaking about yesterday, little volume one there, big volume one, is over and out. And uh, now volume two to this. I didn't plan any of these messages, you know. They just come by the Holy Ghost, come from heaven. The amazing benefits of walking in God's high calling. What the earth needs most right now and in any generation is, the, is people to carry the power of God, the glory of God. People to carry the life and essence and glory and movement and giftedness and miraculous supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. 
Nothing can deliver mankind but death. You know, a false religion will only lead people down the wrong road, no matter how much they seem to get together and organize, at the end of it, they're not, they're not saved. They have to get saved, or else, or else, it's not good. And then the only thing that destroys the yoke is the anointing. So the high calling, when you're walking in the high road, the glory of the Holy Ghost will be moving upon you. Like, like Book of Acts, ancient disciples and apostles kind of power, like what they walked in after being with Jesus. And after the Holy Spirit, as I was speaking about yesterday, came in the upper room to anoint them to go out and wreak havoc on the devil's kingdom and change everything in the world. It says these men that were anointed by God went to turn the world upside down. We have to ask the question, where are they today? See men standing. I just saw a picture somebody sent me. I don't know why he sent me that. I was like, I, I put four question marks as a reply. Why did you send me this? Four men standing in some big place and they look like thugs. Honestly, if you look, uh, look the picture up and down, sideways, forward, you look like, they look like uh, receptacles of crime. <laughs> And maybe they're pastors, you know. One had a collar on, like he's a pastor. A kind of guy, I think I... I don't know who he is. I might have seen him somewhere. He didn't look like anything special. Never heard of him. Didn't recognize him. The anointing will make you recognizable. Millions of people can know who you are. Millions of people know who I am. All the time. It never... It's never it never... It never ceases, you know. But then you walk through realms of through interactions with people. You watch how they carry on. Some great, some not so great, some good, some bad, some negligent, you know. And you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta look at all that and say, well, the hand of God that's upon me for his good purpose is what's the most important, is, is the most important thing. That's what's most important. You know, people look at government uh, or celebrities or what in the world. You know, a, a true servant of God that carries the power to shake and change nations is much more important than them. But it seems like the world's got it twisted backwards. They want to persecute the church. They want to hate, because they hate Jesus. They'll hate you. But they love uh, anybody pop star, anybody that's, you know, like the feel good thing and they'll throw money at them and but at the, end of the, at the end of it all, when you weigh it all out, who is really the king and the victor? The sinner that's a popular person? Or a politician who's a mere uh, gentleman or lady? Gentlewoman? Or a celebrity or a sports star or an actor or an A-lister of some kind? Or a business mogul? All of that gets filtered through back down to sand and dust at the end of the day. But what's important is the person who carried the glory of the Spirit of God. I, I am amazed at the supernatural realm of the Holy Ghost, how he possesses me and takes my mind and my spirit and begins to give me things to say and speak and, and things I didn't pre-think. But the fact that I've studied all these years, it's, it's a lot is in me. So he can push the button of, you know, knowledge and understanding and all things that I had, and then work with me to, to bring it out. Because God, in the spirit, he also does use your mind. But the glory of the supernatural, oh, it's the best thing ever. Here's a, here's a problem I see. I'm talking about the high calling again. The Lord is, have people looking, would have people looking vertically, or if he's standing in front of you horizontally in the connection with him, 
but people seldom look there. They're always looking at something else. And here's another supernatural fact, a supernatural uh, way of looking at things. Can you look at anything and still see beyond it what's to come? Can you see beyond the natural of still yet what you're believing for by faith or what you think and know that God wants to do? Or are you just looking at the, the bad reality of situations that you see? You, you can't do that. That's not the life of faith. The life of faith dictates this to us, that anything we see can be changed. But anything temporal can become affected by the glory of God and changed for the better. Anything. And when you see strings of the frailties of humanity along the way in all kinds of situations, you go, wait a minute now. That's not my realm of reference for my life. I'm looking way past that. I see nations. I see multitudes of people. I see millions of people being touched and affected. I'm not affected in any adverse way by temporal scenarios that could happen in the course of the day or a situation. You don't feel affected by it when your eyesight is open in the spirit realm and you're looking at, at a, ahead at the, the ultimate destiny of what God is working on with you. The Lord had me tell this apostle I met with today, a, a great man of God, great senior man, senior man. He's not a young man. Seems these are the guys I'm connected with because they're solid. These young punks, if I could say so, to be a bit curt about it, they, they're all into their own, trying to climb and break through agenda. They're reaching for things, but a senior guy who's a mature person, they're very stable. And they have success already under their belt. You know, they're really made. Now, someone like that you can work with because it's all going to be good. It's like the, the, the made stature that's in you in a mature way and what's in them in a mature way can connect together and now you can produce something. So I've, 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 I've seen that. You know, some people you need to step around and leave them, some that we tried to help and it seems like they didn't want help. They wanted something we had, they wanted money, they wanted, they wanted, you know, some people even think they could try to steal your anointing. That's the most laughable, uh, rude, un almost unforgivable offense. You could say, well, I want to be blessed. Pray for me. Let an impartation happen. Someone that's carrying the glory can pray for people, but let the Lord arrange it. And I was telling some testimonies. What happened in the nation of Uganda and Nigeria and a few other places in my travels of miracles of supernatural abundance and breakthrough that happened for people. I'm talking about in magnanimous ways. And I'll tell those testimonies another time. I won't try to do it now. But they're very detailed and very lengthy. But I, I, I'm not going to, I don't feel to share those again right now. But uh, monumental happenings to people that were receptive and hungry and also generous. Generous people get well watered. God sees to it that he sends someone to them. Now today I couldn't let this guy go, although we, we, we discussed so many things in business and ministry and plans and events and places and... Uh, government officials and events and things we're planning. So many things. And then we were done. We could have said, okay, let's part ways. Go, goodbye. But I said, I said, yeah, we'll get to pray another time because I felt like, ah. And then I started to pray and I thought, nah. The Lord said to me, he reminded me, he said, my son, my glory is in you. Don't let this moment pass. I felt it. So I grabbed my recorder. I said, I got to put this recording on. Here we go. I announced the name, the date, whatever. However many minutes it was, 20 minutes or so, about a 20-minute prayer. 
the most magnanimous details, even for myself, was coming from the Lord speaking through me. For him and for me and for us. And then you could see a connection, a divine connection with someone who's a senior person, who's really mature, really brilliant, really skilled, really anointed, really a made person. You can build something together. Because there's no camarad there's, there's camaraderie, not, competi not competitiveness. No competition, there's, there's completion. It's an awesome thing. So as I was speaking that, I began to prophesy to myself. Can you imagine if I just said, okay, we're done. Uh, let's, call, let's call the meeting uh, adjourned and you go on your way and I have things to do myself. I'm heading to another. No. In fact, the by the way prayer that I, God sent me to a certain region far from where I'm sitting right now, very far. Five, six hundred, maybe six hundred kilometers away. Five hundred at least. Yeah, six hundred, six hundred, six hundred. And uh, got there, saw the scenario, didn't feel led to do much, but we went into the leader's office. Never met him. Was told he's a great man. I could tell when I looked at his smile. But, you know, you look at anybody, they smile. You don't know what's in their heart. And we're sitting there, talk a little bit, chit-chat. They're going to have their service. I was on, I was on my way to preach to an, in another uh, town. That's probably an hour from there, 40 minutes from there. We had a schedule. They wanted me to preach to their service, but I didn't feel it. So sure enough, we go, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Here it is again. The glory that God has me carry. Boom! The prophetic word began to flow. I mean, it was astounding. It was astounding. It was astounding. The details God spoke over this man and woman of God, him and his wife, the wife was jumping and rejoicing, not out of emotion or religiosity, but genuine Holy Ghost fire that was released. And the details God spoke about their destiny. And they're involved, connected with some things that God wants to unconnect, you know, disconnect and bring them into a higher level as an apostolic way for the region. They are the anointed servants for that land. Had I just said, okay, we got to go. Nice to meet you, talk another time. It wouldn't have been released. And the funny thing is, I'm talking about the high, the high calling, the high road, the glory of heaven in a man. Many people, they don't have that reservoir in them from the spirit. They don't have that heavenly realm in them. So if they're gonna pray, they're just gonna pray a prayer from their head. Maybe a little bit from the heart, you know, hopefully. But just some surface issue, Lord bless us, thank you, and then we pray for this, we speak this. Uh, no and easy things to figure out, even if you're declaring them. By quoting a scripture or something good that's good to say, yeah? My Lord. But when the glory of God begins to flow, oh my, it's a whole, it's a whole different event. Are you seeing that? And it's too rare. I'm trying to shut this. It's too rare. I mean, it's a rarity of rarities. You see people that are carrying the glory. Now I have a reference point for this. I go back a long time where that was our quest. I'm, if, I, if I dated myself back to carbon dating, you know, it's that long ago. It's like carbon dating, you know, you wanna see if something's a thousand years or 1200 years old or 2000 years old, you do use carbon dating, if the scientific thing. I'm making a joke, how far back it is. Ancient of days, 
Yeah, I'm a few minutes older than uh, more than a millennial, and a, a few younger than Methuselah, somewhere in between. If I were to date it back, I don't even want to say that verbally right now. But this was our reference point. I'm talking about endless, countless events where mighty men of God laid their hands on me. I'm carrying a lot, even other mantles. I don't talk about this much, but I need to talk about it. Other mantles. I can name names of famous, famous, famous preachers, A-listers, known around the world by television, have laid their hands on me. There was transference of mantles and anointing. If I said names, some people would want to get, you know, some people might want to fight over it. I'll be too shocked to go, wow, you have part of that? Yes. Name the, let me name the names. You instantly know who they are. I'm talking about famous men in the kingdom of God right now, in our generation, alive right now. And a couple that have gone on to be with the Lord already. But when you see a church structure and system where there's no glory like that, everybody's just on a surface level trying to struggle and survive, living by wallowing, striving to, striving, not thriving, striving to exist through wallowing in endless poverty and despair and brokenness of everything. Curses of, from generations, sins and corruptions. Even from the pulpit on down to everywhere else, it's just... An endless cycle of mess, of filth and degradation for the human life. And uh, no power, no glory, no excellence. And then you have a few guys that are like supposedly the giants, or they, they call them the, the fathers or the what, and you look and you roll your eyes. You know the emoji, emoji the eye rolling up? I use that one a lot. I send it in a lot of SMSs I send out. Right. So boring. You say, if that's the exemplary factor of Jesus in the earth, and that's all I have to look up to, boy, I, I, better, go fa I better go to a mountain or a valley somewhere and fast and pray myself for a move of heaven. Let it come upon me in Jesus' name. Now, I've, I've done this, I can tell you. I'm carrying this, I can tell you. You can be friendly with people, you can have relationship, you can, you know, do, but they don't ever want to do anything anyway. It's all usually all about them. I'll tell you, I've seen it all. I've seen it all. I've seen it all. Meet them. They go, oh, hi, how are you? They know very well who you are. I'm a very famous prophet, by the way. I am very famous. By God's outpouring through me, that's really how it all happened. And uh, you go, yeah, 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 here we are, blah, blah, blah. Never amounts to anything. Doesn't add up to anything. So what's the answer to that? Reshift. Refocus. Make new decisions. Walk in the glory and let it come out of you the way God wants to everybody. To millions of people. I heard this saying, it's a little bit hard to understand for some people. They said, when you want more, you give away what you have. Does that make sense in the natural? You say, if I give away everything I have, will I have any left? But, the, but it's really a, an art of understanding the realm of sowing and reaping. Giving and receiving. And the Lord keeps pouring more back upon you. You give, you give, you give, you give, you pour out. And then there's others that want to come to try to take See, they, they don't ever get it. The ones that have a wrong motive don't, don't ever get it. But I was telling the test of one testimony to this uh, apostle today, a while ago. He, uh, I was telling him about a certain country that I was in where they're very generous people in the nation of Nigeria. I said, in Nigeria, when you, when you get invited by someone great, it's like an insult to remind them of any need you have, or that's something you want. You can't do that. They already purpose in their heart based on principle. They understand the laws of the kingdom. They're gonna be generous, they're gonna bless you. In fact, you asking kind of like, might rub them the wrong way, or wondering what it is, just let them flow. 
Now, if you went to, you went it through the right door. If you go in the wrong door, oh, as good as it can be on the high level is as bad as it can be on the low level if you don't get to the right place. And I know that. Being in the, in the hands or connection with wrong, with bad people. Oh my God, I've lived through, I've lived through something with that. Why, I don't know. Why something's happened, I, 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 I don't know. Why some people are the way they are, can't understand, but to their own detriment, their own loss. But the main thing is, how do we bless humanity in the time we have left? What do we do to advance the kingdom? Give, 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 give. Pour out, pour out, pour out. Discern, pray, know, avoid, connect, disconnect, connect. It's an endless process. It's almost something you have to almost do like every day. Imagine that. I was talking to somebody that was a possibility of doing something and then it dawned on me it's a lot of work to make this happen so let me leave it and I did like if God brings it around again I'll leave, to, I'll leave it to his providence and sovereignty if not who cares there's, there's a principle called the law of recognition sometimes there's something staring right at you, very close to you, that you don't know is the greatest blessing. That's a very painful revelation. Sometimes you look at so far away, like somebody painted a picture of something to you that looks so magnanimous, right? And now you find the thing that's just like five minutes away or within arm's reach, and you go, oh my God. It was right here. Then you need to work on that and cultivate it. A dear mentor who's a great, great wisdom carrier, phenomenal man of God, he, say, he always says, everybody needs training. Nobody's as they first appear, good or bad, and everybody needs training and development, and everybody needs to be refined and mentored and raised up and brought up and taught and trained and imparted to that they catch the real flow. Because the frailty of humanity will always be there. And you gotta repeat things a lot of times. You gotta say it again. And you have to drill it into, uh, not drill it, I mean, uh, pour it into people. That after a while, wow, now they're, they become a receptacle of your grace. Something to it. And it really, it, it's all God's grace, you understand? It all came from him. How did me, Thomas Manton IV, end up with a supernatural calling to go and literally be used of God to shake nations of the world when we weren't even Christians in our family? And then I had this visitation like Paul, like Saul of Tarsus on Damascus Road. He became Paul the Apostle. I had that kind of experience. That's how I got saved. I mean, how on earth did I end up flowing in all this? Because Jesus appeared to me and laid his hands on me in an open vision. Many, 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 many years ago. And ordained me into this office of a prophet to the nations of the world. So the best thing I can ever do with my time, my focus, my energy, my passion and compassion is to focus on that high calling that God's given me to walk out for him. Nothing else matters at the end of the road of life than the destiny that God has ordained for each person. How much we've done to advance the kingdom, how much We've allowed God to work in us. How much we're willing to carry his, his presence to everybody we come in contact with and the multitudes of people as the Lord ordains. The high calling.
And really, perfection is not an accident. This was an electrical company that had this <clears throat> advertising slogan, perfection is not an accident. In other words, we're striving for perfection, but not having an accident in the electrical realm is, is perfection. Perfection is not an accident. You see how it works kind of inversely back. Very clever statement. I never forgot it. And it was written in big neon lights above the building uh, across the... polluted, filthy river across that bridge in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, where they had the factory. This big, famous, world-famous electric company, electric industrial plant, Perfection. I don't even remember the name of the company. I should remember. If I really thought it through, I can get it, the name back. But I don't remember the name of the company, but I remember that slogan because I used to read it over and over again across the way in big, I mean, the letters were like, uh, kind of letters would be like 20 feet tall each letter and it had light in it and it would shine across the whole skyline like any direction you looked at it and you could see it perfection is not an accident so that carries over into what we're doing now I mean, you, you have to understand perfection doesn't come cheaply or easily it comes by cultivating how much are we working on things how much are we working on ourselves how much are we allowing God to work on us how much are we shifting everything in the realm of focus to achieve the high calling that God has ordained for us to walk in that is the question that each person needs to answer. You don't have to look for an answer from the outside. Get it from the inside. How much am I doing? And always remember, what's coming and what we see in the spirit, what needs to happen is always far beyond what we see around us. People in their frailties and limitations, environments, how horrible they may seem, all that is irrelevant. It's relevant to some things, uh, unfortunately even, but when you look past it, you're always seeing that next realm. Now, what happens then is you prophetically, in the spirit and by faith, begin to put together the spirit and the natural, heaven and earth connected together through you. And it begins to produce and create something for the glory of God that we can then walk on that high road a high road is like you're, you're looking up to the top of the mountain and to the sky. You're not down on the ground with all the cre creeping, crawling creatures. Remember part of, part of dominion in Genesis 126 was you have dominion over every creeping thing upon the earth. So if you're standing on the ground, everything that's creeping around, uh, you've got to walk over it. And Luke 10, 19 says you leave and crush serpents and scorpions or devils and evil. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. You become untouchable and impenetrable. Impenetrable mainly. When the glory of God is around you and on your life. The devil sees the off-limit sign. Yeah, he'll try to attack and oppose, but he can't get in. Because the hedge is too big. The shield is too great. The fire is too glorious. It's too hot. They can't penetrate it. They would want to try to hurt but they don't have any door. That's why he says, let, let no, the devil has not, Jesus said the devil, the prince of this world has nothing in me. So let's keep going, boys, let's go. He told his disciples, he has nothing in me. He came to tempt Jesus in the wilderness and there was three things, three answers Jesus gave the devil. It is written, it is written, it is written. And the, the scripture says the devil left him. He couldn't handle it. He left him for a season. He took off. He said, I can't argue with that. I can't beat that. That's the word. It is written. How much... i got to ask this question now in the light of this message. And doctrinally speaking, how much of it is written is in you that you have the solution to every dilemma of life in you by the word of God? Not just your prayer or desire 
or something you'd like to think you'd like to see happen, but but actually by uh, logos itself, the written canon, C-A-N-O-N, the written law of God, because that thing has e eternal power that can never be refuted. I love the scripture. Here it is now. Get ready. I'm going to prove the point here by the word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away, the Lord said. The psalmist said in Psalm 119, how does a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. How does a young woman, anybody, how do they fix their path? By taking heed according to the word. And also in Psalm 119, the famous scripture, way, way on, a hundred verses in, or more, it talks about your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Your word. In the beginning was the word. Jesus is even likened to the word himself, John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. And the Word became flesh <coughs> and dwelt among us. That's awesome. Verse 12, John 1, verse 12. To as many as received Him, him and Him, even as the Word, even the Word, He gave power to become the sons of God. How can you say it's not just Jesus like walking along with his robes on? The guy that made this noise that goes around the speakers of the world should be, anyway. How is it like it to be the word? It is because truth, he's the way, the truth, and the life. John 8, 32, after John 8, 31, says the truth will make you free. John 8, 31 said, you're, you're my disciples because you continue in my word. A lot of people want to focus on, uh, you'll know those are my disciples because they have loved one for another. Yeah, that's a good one. That's more talked about than the word in action. The word in action is scary to the devil and his ugly friends. It's scary to the human carnal man. Because the word will produce something new. One of the, one of the names of, of God is Jehovah our righteousness. The Lord our righteousness. We see that in Genesis. He's Jehovah Jireh. The Lord our provider. But he's the father who oversees our life and will see our future and see to it that it happens. It's one of the definitions of a deeper Hebrew way of, a Hebrew definition of the word Jireh, Yireh. He's the one who sees our future and will see to it that it happens. That comes by money and possessions and provisions and all kinds of outpouring of favor and blessing. Then he's Nisi, he's Sitkanu, righteousness, yeah, he's, he's uh, Rohi, he's Nisi, over us, his glory, he's Rafa, the Lord our healer, he's Shalom, peace. You know what peace means? Absence of chaos. It also means, Shalom also means Nothing broken, nothing missing. Everything is in order, everything is good. How much shalom do we have from Jehovah? How much righteousness do we have? Holiness. How much provisions do we have? Jireh. How much healing are we walking in? Rofe. How much do we understand? Kana, Q-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, one of the names of God. Jehovah, Kana. The Lord thy God is a jealous God. He's jealous over us with his love, with the apple of his eye. How much of that do we walk in? I tell you, when you get, even to meditate on this and for me to kind of bring this up and let this flow out of me, you know, even though I know a lot of these things in my memory, but to speak it out now by the Holy Ghost, the anointing touches the word in you and brings it forth and even speaks new things. But when there's a lot in somebody, they can share a lot. The anointing pushes all the buttons and begins to have me, you know, bring it out. And I'm saying all these things that I have from my study and from memory. If I had nothing, empty shell, 
no, no, no nutrients or meat coming from that. Empty heads and empty hearts, taking people nowhere, blind, leading, can't see right. Can't see ahead in the spirit. Blind, leading the blind, they all fall in the blind, they all fall in the ditch. Isn't that sad? No power, no love, like tinkling cymbals, clanging gongs. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12, Now, my brethren, I wouldn't have you to be ignorant concerning the things of the Spirit. He talked about the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. How much are we seeing those nine manifestations of the Holy Ghost? We call them the gifts of the Spirit. Pneumatikos, which means manifestations of the Spirit. Prophecy. Tongues and interpretation, discerning of spirits, gifts of healings, gifts of prophecy, the working of miracles, the gift of faith and operation. How much are we seeing this? The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. Counsel, according to Isaiah 11, 2, attributes of the Holy Ghost. How much are we seeing? Where Proverbs, Solomon said, in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. You've got to have a lot of wisdom, a lot of... Then somebody says something, check it out, go further, get a second opinion. If you're dealing with anything in business, you're dealing with anything with in your health, they call it get a second opinion. Lack of knowledge causes destruction. Part of walking in the high glory, the high road, the high calling, you've got to have a lot of knowledge working in you. Even the Bible calls it in Isaiah 11, 2, attributes of the Holy Ghost, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding. Oh my God, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, which is strength. Uh, is mentioned as strength in Revelation 5, 12. Yeah, I call these kingdom keywords, but they're words of power. They're attributes of, of God himself. When you're filled with those things and they're flowing through you, you can't lose Knowledge, through knowledge, the just are delivered. But through the lack of knowledge, people are destroyed. People are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. But Hosea 4, 6 has a remedy for that. He says, through knowledge, the just are delivered. You could be just, God loves you, he wants to be merciful to you. But there's some knowledge you have or something you don't understand that you need to know about. And you don't have that information. And you can make a wrong decision. You can neglect an opportunity. You can move a wrong way, find out something the hard way, and you don't want to do that. There's two ways to learn and live and succeed, is by mistakes or mentors, through other people's expertise or your own experience, which takes too long, it's too hard and painful, and you'll make too many little blunders along the way. God doesn't want you to live like that. So where there's wisdom, you got to tap the grace and get into it. And marvel and marvel at and work with the people that respect God. Respect his anointing, respect his grace. There's something to that. That's beyond everybody else. I, I, I'm hearing it again. I'm, I'm meditating on this today. I'm hearing this again. Juniors and novices are not to be fooled with too much. Because they're fickle, you know? They're competitive, they're insecure, they're not reliable. You see that. And then some people just are not reliable, period. I have a friend in South Africa. He's a great servant of God. I love him. And we had a big meeting in a soccer stadium there, and I prayed over people. I have a photograph of that. I waved my hand and shouted fire, and the power of God hit people, they all fell down. They were slain in the Holy Ghost on the, on the, what do you call that? AstroTurf or the grass, whatever it is, on the soccer field. Oh my God, that was powerful. I have a picture that I'm standing like this. I had a red shirt and a black suit on, black jacket. That was in South Africa in his meeting. Now, he, he posted something today. He said, another experience, another down sitting below the uprising. The man of God said, I learned again today what it is to be disappointed by man and to have to trust in God, not people.
Ooh. I don't even want to call him to find out because I know he'll vent. And we'll, we'll all be like, oh my God. You walk through that. But the greater one lives in you. You have to always constantly be reminding yourself of that. If I were to talk to him, I'd say, look, the destiny you have is far beyond so many other people. You're, you're a great man. There, there's great things ahead. Uh, look, keep peering, looking into the future. Look past all this and see God coming with his hand out and giving you so much that no man could have blessed you with. Remember Abraham said he wouldn't take something, anything from this, uh, this king, but he said, I don't want anybody to say who, that, they get, that they helped me. Wow. He said, he, I'll have this testimony that no man has made me rich but Almighty God. Only God made me rich. Proverbs 10.22 says, The blessing of the Lord makes me rich and has no sorrow with it. Deuteronomy 8.18, he said, I give you power to get wealth, to make, manage, and multiply. Money and resources that you can have to use to be blessed with. There's realms of wealth, pockets of wealth, fat pockets we have, treasures of blessing, even hidden places that are being unveiled and released to us. Why? Because we're walking in the high calling. You think Abraham got rich just because he was another man, by the way, standing on the side and God passed by and said, oh, you, oh. Ah, I like the way you, I like the way you did your hair or, or you you look cool today somehow. I like your outfit or smile upon you, make you a billionaire. No, it didn't happen like that. I read this scripture yesterday. I think it's in, it's in Isaiah 41. He, he, when he mentioned Abraham again, Isaiah the prophet mentioned Abraham again and said, God called him his friend. The Lord was saying to Abraham, could you imagine the, the Lord saying in the first person, and God says this, Abraham, comma, my friend, period. That's how God spoke of Abraham's name. Why did Abraham become a billionaire? U.S. dollar billionaire. Some said he was more, worth more than 200 billion U.S. dollars. Calculations of historically what the scripture said he had and he looked through historical records. This is a very, very int intrinsic, forensic, detailed analysis of what Abraham had. He said it had to be worth over $200 billion in today's money. Why did he become so rich? Because he was God's friend. Why did Job get blessed double for his trouble? Because he went through a trial? No, a lot of people go through trials. Many people die from trials. Have you noticed? They get in the trial, they never get out of it. Many people perish, they lose even their lives, they lose things, they go through such hell. And they never get recompensed back to any great degree. Why not? Just maybe they neglected this invitation from Jesus himself and the Holy Spirit and the Father God to walk on the high road, to fly high above everything else. You could get hit with something that's a disappointment and in seconds overrule it by the glory that's in you. I do it all the time. Amazed at the anointing in my life. I'm amazed right now what I'm saying here in this message. This is supernatural. You think I was going to leave before doing this? The place I'm at now? Not on your life. Let me prophesy something right now that I heard the Lord say to me earlier today. The weather in East Africa will begin to change for the better. It'll begin to get warmer. The sun will come out and stay out. I decree it by, as God's prophet in Jesus' name. And this damn, dank, dark coldness, gray skies, gloom in the air, toxicity and pollution and disease is being wiped off this part of the world in Jesus' name.
Let the sun come out. Let the temperatures rise. I don't know how much they can rise, but that feeling of the cold and the cold air and that bad touch of this damp coldness in the air, I prophesy and I command it to leave in Jesus' name. From today, watch the weather patterns even begin to change. So be it in Jesus' name. I heard it in the morning, and already the, it seems today is it's getting lighter, it's getting more sunny, it's getting more. A little bit of that coldness is getting rebuked, put out. Let the weather flip back again nice. From the cold and horror it was the last couple of months, it's going to flip for the better and get warmer. Say amen. I don't even care what's been forecasted. God can change it yet. So be it in Jesus' name. We need it for our enjoyment. Joshua stopped the sun. Remember the sun was going down. They needed more time to fight in that battle of AI and against the AI hits or whatever they were. AI. God said, I give you faith, my son. Joshua had the idea, let me stop the sun, let the days last longer that we can win this battle. Whatever the battle was called then. I know there was the AI, which had some problems, but there was a time when Joshua stopped the sun, made the day last longer, because he needed it. I don't know about you, but I need the warm weather. I'm a tropical boy. I like, I like warm weather. I like sunshine and palm trees. I don't like cold air. I couldn't, I'm not going to live up in Canada or North America or North Europe or what? Uh, Russia or somewhere up there. Or China where it's cold up there, minus. You know, one day we'll ask the Lord. Maybe he'll answer us. I don't think he'll answer us now. Because I tried. He didn't say nothing. <laughs> I already tried it. Follow me as I follow Christ. I've already had the debate and the lament and the, the speech about it. Lord, why did you make the winters? Why did you make sharks and crocodiles and mosquitoes and why? You know, they, I guess they have a purpose, you know, but not pleasant if you get in the way of them. And the weather, the weather differences, why? But Gen Genesis 8.22 says summer and winter, cold and heat, you know? So it's, a, it's an established thing. But if you're smart, you can go to tropical places from the cold winter places and live there. That's wisdom. Wisdom is justified of all her children, you know? You give birth to something good when you're wise. You don't like something, change it. You don't like the way something is, speak to it. You don't like the way life is in a certain way? Tap the grace of the Holy Ghost. Get its visitation upon you and change it all. And stay in that realm of looking at the positive things ahead instead of the negative things you see. Say amen. A big amen to that. That's powerful. A positive outlook. Not just the power of positive thinking, but I'm talking about it. Yeah, that's that too in your mind, but in the Holy Ghost. Speaking to the mountains, say, be removed. Speaking to the frailties of humanity and the disappointments and the trials and errors of things and situations and environments. It's saying, I'm above it all. I'm above it all. Because I'm walking in the glory of God. You can partner with this anointing, tap the grace by sowing into this. Because that's how you become a partner of the ministry, by sowing into it. Do that. The links in the heading of the message, uh, the titles are there for your benefit to take advantage, to partner with this grace, and to receive the touch of heaven that's upon me and come upon you in greater ways in Jesus' name. I press on to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, Paul said. I don't count myself to have attained anything great yet. There's more ahead. I know people like to say this as a nice cliche in the church, 
Oh, there's a season changing, and greater is the thing that's ahead than was before. I know we all say that, but really it's true. The only thing I want to say about season, because people act like they're prophesying, oh, there's a new season, a shift, a new thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What about what God, I was telling this apostle today, what, what about what God wanted to do already? He already st established his will. He's already given us leading in his direction. We don't need a new season. What you call a new season for that to happen. Think about it. The preaching of the gospel, the prophesying of the prophetic word, the teaching of the prophetic anointing, under the prophetic anointing, the word of God, the message, preaching, teaching, prophesying, declaring, expounding upon, training, teaching, theologically releasing the brilliance of God according to his doctrine, God's doctrine, all that, never should supersede thought. It should provoke you to think, rather, and think about the possibilities and realities of walking a victorious life. Revelation from the Holy Ghost will have you walk above every adverse circumstance. That's how you get through it. That's how you go on to the next day with a positive look on life. And men will ever miss the mark. Your trust can never be in the frailty of humanity. God can use people to bless you. But then you look again and you say, well, they didn't do this. They didn't follow through on that. They, they dropped it. And you go, what, am I going to get mad about that? Or I'm going to just walk right on past it, trusting God for the next thing. There's almost nearly 8 billion people on the earth. Can God touch someone to be a blessing to you? Oh, you better believe it. Is someone always observing you that's greatly capable of blessing you? Absolutely. Is there favor that can happen to you that's beyond your reference point of what you expected or thought about? Absolutely. Cabra and Dele Fosai. I feel like this is a this is a prophetic word that's bubbling up in me right now. Yeah. God brought me to this. Here you go. Here, here we go. Here, here, here it comes. Lord, touch people that we never knew. That people that we know that are doing things, that are great things, that are happening. And I'm a witness. They're happening for me. Wow. Beyond wow. But I, I hear the Lord give me this, another word. Raise up people that we never met. People we weren't expecting to see do anything. Come forth now and surprise us with favor and opportunity and outpouring of love and honor and even treasure. Because treasure, where your heart is, there is your treasure, the heart. We'll release the treasure. The system of value, honor, you know what I mean? It causes people to do great feats. Things beyond what we could have planned for. Parabara de la socoche atea. Oh my God. I see it. I see them coming. I had a vision. I'll be reminded of it now. Some, quite some time ago. I saw a cloud moving. And on top of the cloud were these well-dressed, very polished people. On top of the cloud. Not below it. Not under it. The cloud was moving up, elevated, up, up, up. And on top of the cloud, I could see it uh, above it somehow. And I could see on top of it, it was moving. There were all these people. Very distinguished, very organized. There was a lot of resources, a lot of things. I can't explain it all. How. It was so amazing. As I was looking at it, I looked at people that were the best. Excellence. Personified. So powerful. And the Lord said, these are the ones I'm using and I'm prepared for this thing coming. This thing that I'm about to do in the earth. And you're going to see it, my son. You're going to be... You're going to be a recipient of it. You're going to be a part of it. Got... I thought they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. 
this was in the prophetic word that I spoke over this apostle uh, a while ago. We had a meeting. And, and then it was for me too. I recorded it, thank God. I, I almost wished I put on the video that everybody could have seen it, but sometimes you just don't think it's going to happen so supernaturally. So it was, by the way, you know, okay, let's pray now. And I thought, oh, I've got to pray. And I thought, wait a minute. And I think a lot of it was private inter-office memo from the boss to me. I don't think it was for me to the stuff that I was supposed to put out to the world, really. When there is, I do it like that. I was in a bishop's office, an apostle's office of the whole region where he's at, great man. And instead of just recording a prayer, a prophecy over him, I felt it was for the region and for the nation, and it was. Some things I even talked about the election process, what the Supreme Court was gonna do, and they did what I, what I had said came to pass. And this is before their ruling and, you know, they were going through that process. The Lord was talking about the outcome. All these things came, and many prophecies through, through there. And, and it was prayer over him and the region, but it was also for everybody. So the Lord just led me to set the thing up and make a, a, a video there, a live video. And it was 54 minutes long, 5-4. I was talking, what? I'm guess in this guy's office. We came to meet him and greet him, you know. Say hi, talk a bit, pray a little bit, then go. And I do a 54-minute broadcast with my tripod and uh, camera on his desk. He loved it. But it was God, you know. When, you, when you're full of God, you can be bold like that. And someone that's pure-hearted and open and a real servant of God, they'll love something like that. Others that are devils or carnal, they won't. You know. And the Lord spoke like that. So I, was, I was just pondering on this thing today. I felt there was a lot of an inter-office thing. Now what I could do is have it typed out and release it as a prayer for people that are believing for organizational structures. The Lord spoke a lot about that. And we can still release it. Amen. That's why I just record everything. I have to record everything. And the Lord speaks so supernaturally. We weren't planning that, but that's how it came forth. So the glory is in us. For what? To produce everything that needs to happen. Say amen. So sow into this anointing. Sow into this grace. You will be blessed. And if anybody's lingering that doesn't know Jesus as your Savior, you haven't committed yourself to just say, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. Come into my heart. I receive your gift of eternal life. Forgive me of all sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I want to be yours. The devil is no longer uh, any, any authority in my world or my life. I'm giving myself to Jesus. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your salvation. And all of us, even as believers, we should pray like that too every day. I'm not talking about going back and doing the sinner's prayer every day. That's kind of elementary. It's not bad to do that, but you don't have to do that. But the prayer consecration every day, Lord. Oh, I feel the anointing right now. Just here it comes right now. Flowing, filling us. With us walking in that stead, in that posture of Him, the Lord, our righteousness. Jehovah, Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. We are one with him. That's the high room. Take it and walk on it. I'm Thomas Manton IV. More later, we'll continue. Love you much. And be blessed, my precious friend. In Jesus' name. Talk to you again real soon.